Welcome to the GMAP Broadcast Network. Yours truly, Pastor Kevin, here uh, on the number one faith-based, motivational, and inspirational broadcast platform in the country. And, of course, uh, on this evening, we have my special guest stopping by to hang out with us. And, first of all, let me find out. Let me find Well, I, I think I already know because he had a smile on his face. But how you doing, Bruce? How you doing? I am doing great. I've been looking forward to this all day. Been working real hard to get to this point. So, um I'm happy to be here. Very happy to be here. So let's go ahead and get started. We are, you know what? We have already started and we are happy to have you here just as well. I'm excited for you. Do me a kind favor, if you don't mind, for all of our viewers and listeners around the world. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. Who is Bruce Braddock? Oh, wow. Um, Bruce Braddock is um, originally from Indiana. Um, I've been in, in and out of churches let's just go ahead since we're faith-based here we'll just talk about churches been in and out of churches um all my life pentecostal church of god baptist churches catholic churches um been um in i was in spain for a little while in those catholic churches um uh, try uh, basically try to let you know that i have a diverse background i'll try to say it that way um i've been a baptist uh for the past let's say 30 years and um, fell into um, an avenue called, um, you know, my book, which is um, Angels of the Gospel Truth. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Angels of the Gospel Truth. I tell you, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for all of our viewers and listeners. And speaking of Angels of the Gospel Truth, I want you to you know, break it down a little bit for us. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about this publication, Angels of the Gospel Truth. Angels of the Gospel Truth uh, started uh, way back when um, um, my little girl was running up and down the hallway. Someone had given her some angel wings, and they were made of wire and hosiery and some glitter and some lace. They were actually quite pretty. Um, they were pretty enough to mount up on the wall, and um, they had straps, and she was able to strap them on and and run up and down the hallway. She loved to run. And uh, obviously with Angel, she wanted to fly. So um, I did my best to let her do that and not hurt herself. And next, simply to uh, um, maybe strap on an extra pair of Angel wings and see if she could fly higher. And that's where the discussion began with how many wings does an angel have? And uh, Google was young back then and we decided to uh, do a little search on Google to see how many wings an angel may have and um, found out that seraphim had a certain number, cherubim had a certain number. Maybe the actual angel spirit men had none. Um, and uh, it went along that line, but it also went along a little comical, a little bit more animated with um, toddler sized angels or um, simply chubby cheeked cherub uh, babies with wings coming out of their heads. Uh, so it, it, and then you might have, uh, like the Harlequin romance novel with, uh, let's say, um, a model like Fabio with the long hair and the wings, everything just went a little crazy. And sometimes it went a little bit deep and it went dark. So, uh, when it went deep and dark, that caught my attention. And, um, that's when I started then applying that and finding those things, let's say, in my Bible, those verses that I had never seen before, even though I had read those verses before or those entries before, I had never seen any uh, delineation, let's say, to angels. And I thought, hmm, you know, people really need to know about this. And I started the, the book, um, Angels, the Gospel Truth, because behind the angels, when you add angels back into the picture, um, just like you would in a play in the theater of the mind, making them a character where you have angels, God, the prophets, the Israelites, the Gentiles, you, etc. cetera. Um, it made uh, it, the pockets of information, all those Bible stories just came into an incredible light and um, a whole it illuminated a whole lot more than what it had in the past. So therefore, I wrote the book. Wow. Now, let me ask you this. Is this, in fact, your very first publication or is this a follow up to something that you've previously written before? 
Wow. This is, no, this is my first publication. I hope it's not my last, but it certainly, it certainly is my first. It took me um, 11 years to write. Uh, be, and uh, I'm very happy about that because it was a journey. Uh, there's nothing in here, at least so far, where I go back and go, gee, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I would have said it this way. Um, certainly there's lots of examples that I have left out that um, I wish I put, would have put in there, but the book flows very, very well. I wrote it like many people in this time frame where we are right now. I w wrote it during quarantine and because uh, that was my opportunity. That was my, that was my link in time to be able to finish, um, to be able to finish it. And, um, and uh, let's say maximize what is in there, the information that's in there. Wow. I tell you, I'm excited for you. And, First of all, let me uh, let if you don't know now, you know, uh, Bruce Brad, he, Brad Doc, I'm sorry. He is one of our featured art, uh, authors on the GMAP broadcast network. Uh, we always encourage you to stop by our platform and uh, click on the tab that simply says featured authors. And you'll see a copy of the book cover that I'm currently showing you on the television screen. Click on that cover. It will take you to the necessary location in order to find out more intimate information and details about the author as well as the publication. Now, I know that there are some people out there that are going to be uh, encouraged and inspired by this, and they're going to think it's an outstanding read. But what if one of these individuals were to come up and tap you on the shoulder and say, well, Bruce, I know, uh, I, I know that you're uh, putting out this publication and I know it's good and I know where you've been and where you are, but What's next for Bruce Braddock? What would your response be to that? Wow. Um, the next book would, if I wanted to write a book, was what would it mean? You know, Paul says uh, in your writings to, in his writings, basically to um, make sure that you're saved. What does it mean to be saved? How do you know that you're saved? Um, there would be some things uh, along those lines. I've looked at that idea. The other idea I've looked at is, um, and I don't know how to term it, but it's, uh, let's say, strongholds or houses of power, let's say, in the Old Testament. For example, you have the uh, Queen Jezebel. You have Balaam the magician. Um, you have Laban, who was the uh, father-in-law of Jacob. How powerful was he? A lot of folks don't realize. I'll give you an example. When Jacob was dealing with Laban, God told Laban, be careful what you say to my servant Jacob. Meaning that if Jacob, uh, if Laban would have said something, why would he say, why would he say that? Mm -hmm. Laban would have said something, would have been something that would have had power. Mm -hmm. And God said, be careful what you say to my servant Jacob. So Laban then would have had to have been mindful of that because what Laban would have said would have had power. And there's lots of, let's say, um, divine power that Laban had, since a lot of folks don't realize that Balaam was a magician, but Laban was his grandfather. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an amazing storyline that winds all the way through there wow. that is quite powerful. Wow. I'll, How about that? I, I tell you, man, I, I'm just excited. I know it's going to be an outstanding read. I, I'm encouraging everyone to show their love, care, concern, and support uh, by purchasing uh, this publication. And speaking of that, if someone wanted to show their support today and wanted to reach out and purchase a copy of your current publication, what would be the process for them to do so? How can they get it? How can they receive it? Good question. The best way to go would simply be as uh, America goes, I guess, or everybody goes, which is simply go to Amazon, amazon.com and do a search for uh, either my name possibly or Angels of the Gospel Truth. You um, have the ability then to buy the paperback, which you're showing. I, you can see right here the paperback. Um, you know, that way you have something tangible to hold on to. Maybe you have maybe you're a reader and you like you have the Kindle app. And um, you can simply download it, the Kindle app. You can do it for, I believe, $2.99. Um, if you already are a monthly subscriber, I believe, to Kindle, you can simply get the book for free, which is very nice. Um, the paperback, I believe, it right now is priced at $8.99. Um, there's also my website, which is uh, Angels of the Gospel Truth. 
if you order from me, my supply is limited. That would be supplying, you know, me supplying it. And I could get it to you maybe faster than Amazon could. But Amazon would be the best way to go. Awesome. And, of course, we don't want anyone to uh, forget, as I said before, uh, it's also uh, available on the GMAP Broadcast Network. Don't forget about little old us down here in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, Absolutely. We're, we're here in small print, but, you know, most of the time, small print is, of course, the most important print on the paper. Right. You know, you and, uh, and, and, and I want to encourage you to do something special for me. Uh, if, in fact, you make that purchase through Amazon, we want you to do us a favor and take a few extra minutes and please leave a review. Please leave a review. Say it with me, Bruce. Please, please leave, leave a, a review. review. Please, I tell you, it's, it's <laughs> going to be. It's so important for uh, for the author. It's important for Amazon, and it's uh, just as important to me if you would take a few minutes out of your time to do that. Now, of course, we heard you uh, mention your website and how they could uh, uh, purchase the book and things of that nature, but. Let's say somebody wanted to reach out and talk to you more on an individual basis and have you uh, share some of your intimate sentiment uh, with them. Uh, what would be the process to reach out and connect with you? Through the website, there's a place where you can message me. Through the website, my phone number is listed there also. It's 423 um, 598 You can access me on Facebook. You can access Angels of the Gospel Truth on Facebook. I have lots of uh, folks that do that, like the page uh, or what have you, or will send me a message. And um, that would be the the best ways, at least so far in today's world right now. Wow. Okay. Well, we, you heard it. So, And if you have any issues or problems, just let me know. Reach out and connect with us here at GMAP, and I'll be sure to connect the dots uh, to make sure that you can and will reach uh, one of our featured authors, Bruce Braddock. Bra Braddock. I got I got to make sure I say that right. And, of course, uh, we'll do everything we can to make it happen. Of course, I got to thank you so much, man, for, you know, number one, I got to thank you for being here with us today. Number two, I got to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey. And thank you so much for becoming a part of, of the GMAP Broadcast Network family. I mean, I just can't thank you enough for doing those things. And I'm telling you, I'm going to do everything I can if you allow to uh, uh, put this information out there into the eyes and ears of the people and let them know that you are uh, a great author. We have a great publication for them. And we want to continue to show our love, care, concern, and support by making sure we put this information out there to them you have our number and we want you to use it. We want you to pick up the phone, call, text, chat, tweet, whatever you do. Make sure you reach out to us so we can be of service to you. And of course, the answer will always be yes. And you will never, ever have to ask us twice. I'm giving you my word on that. Now, what I want to do now is I want to move over and I just want you to share with our viewers and listeners what's on your heart. What's on your heart? I'm moving over and Bruce Braddock, the floor is yours. Well, really what I wanted to do was um, I wanted to run through real quick the contents of the book. Um, the contents of the book was going to um, and I was going to go into detail, but our time is just so limited. And that is just simply that um, so that you know what you're getting is going to simply be the angels and their fall. Um, the um, the next one was simply going to be no longer chasing the without. Chapter four is all about being without God. What does that mean? That means that if you're without God, uh, the definition is that you're simply a chaser. You're somebody who is constantly hungry, somebody that doesn't have peace. And if you believe 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4, believe that Jesus died on the cross, believe that he was in the ground three days, believe that he rose on the third day and that he died for your sins and that he rose again for your justification, that you're crucified with Christ, that you are hidden in Christ, that you are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, as it says in Ephesians, that you are then in the body of Christ, that you're no longer a chaser, that you have the mind of Christ, that you have peace with the Lord. 
And that's basically um, what chapter four talks about. Mm-hmm. It tries to give you the information that you need to um, have understanding, to, to understand the book that I wrote. Chapter five had everything to do with um, angel descriptions. We go over what a seraphim is, elemental spirits, fiery darts, crouchy, crouching beasts, not grouchy beasts, but crouching beasts, those that are crouched at the door as um, Cain had to deal with. Um, what is a wheel? What is a cherub? What is an archangel? What is a destroyer? What is a Cosmo Crater? Lots of folks have no idea what a Cosmo Crater is. And indeed, we're coming up here into the fall. We're coming up into Christmas time, the star of Bethlehem. It's time for preachers and churches to start talking about planetary alignments and the alignment of the stars, creating the star of Bethlehem. Not true. Star of Bethlehem was an angel, folks. It's sentient. It made decisions. It guided the magi across the desert, changed directions, waited on them, and was patient with them, and shone directly down on the Savior. That is that is a that is a mark of an angel. That's not a planetary alignment, folks. Chapter six has to do with the fall of men, and we discuss basically Noah um, and what it is that he had to deal with. Chapter seven deals with thy seed, what God said of the judgment in Genesis 3 with the party that was there, which was basically Satan and his colleagues in the background. And there was Adam and Eve there. And chapter 7 deals with thy seed and her seed. And what Noah had to deal with, which was then the reign of the fallen. Um, Chapter 8 deals with... um, uh, I had a little bit more than I wanted to say there, but I'm going to skip it. Um, We went to uh, chapter eight, chapter nine is where Jesus made himself twain. He made himself both Gentile. He made him, which the Bible refers to us Gentiles as Gentile dogs. And he made himself a divine Jew so that he could rescue us, as Paul talked about, rescuing us and get us to be new creatures to make us saved. Chapter 10 has to do with Mount Hermon or Mount Hermon. Um, that's a great place where the angels came down in chap- in Genesis 6, uh, Genesis chapter 6, and chose wives of whomever they chose. And then chapter 11, none of this has anything to do with my opinion. All of it has to do with what is found in the Bible. And King James Version is what I used. I backed it up with all of that, basically showing you points all the way through so that you could connect the dots with possibly what it is that you already know from children's Bible stories or what you've learned in church. Chapter 11 is the only place that I put my opinion. Right. And um, hopefully you'll like that too. Wow. So that would be it, sir. Well, you know, you just gave me, I tell you, you just made my light bulb go off. And I'm going to say this publicly and personally. I would like to invite you back. I would like to invite you back and allow you to discuss each chapter in your publication, one chapter at a time. And it will take, you know, I, it will take you at least 15 to 30 minutes to explain those chapters. I know it will, because I need people to know that, they need to grab an understanding of not just the Bible, but also your publication and why it is written, what some of these things mean, because it seems to me as if you could really give an explanation of a lot of things that people have questions about. So if you're going to accept that invitation, I'm going to invite you back every week until you go through each chapter one chapter at a time. If you accept it, I'm going to offer it to you. And the record button is on. And I want to give you an opportunity to come in and share each chapter of your publication to the world and allow you to break down the chapter so people can get a better understanding. Of course, without giving the entire book away because we want people to show their support for the book. But I believe that it's going to encourage others to really, really try to grab a hold of an understanding of not just your publication, but also the word of God. Do you accept, or do you need a minute? I I might have to give you a minute, Bruce. That sounds like mission impossible. This cassette tape isn't gonna erase or anything or burn up, right? 
when no, we're no. done. No. You sure? <laughs> you sure? I, 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 you know what? If it is, I'm just going to go get another one, and we're going to do it again and get another one and do it again. All so right. We're going to make sure. I, I, that, I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to go up into a puff of smoke. I hope. You know what? If it does go into a, up into a puff of smoke, it's because God intended it to. I'm going to tell you like that. Um, Bruce, I really appreciate you being here today. I'm going to give you a call after this, and I'm going to talk to you more in detail about about that. But I really do want you to continue to be a blessing to the people, uh, continue to uh, pr- produce the publication that you have. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to uh, let the p- world know uh, what what it is that you're doing and show their support make sure that they leave a review and continue to do exactly what is required of not just them, but you also. So I thank you so much for being here. I'm going to make you a book trailer, man. If you don't have one, I'm going to make you one. I think you need a book trailer, man, because I need to keep your face, your eyes, your, your, your publication out there to the eyes and ears of the people all the time. So I'm going to make a book trailer so I can play it on my network every day, two, three, four times a day. So with, with that being said, we appreciate Bruce being here. Once again, he is one of our featured authors and he will be there for quite some time. We want you to continue to stop by, show your support, click on the tab that simply says featured authors, click on the book cover and it will take you to the necessary location to get the information you need to do what it is that you are required to do. And that is show your love, care, concern and support. Bruce, I thank you so much for being here, man. I'm looking forward to inviting you back. Until then, you continue to be blessed and be a blessing, okay? Thank you, Pastor Kevin. All right. Right here on the number one faith-based, motivational, and inspirational broadcast platform in the country, GMAP Broadcast Network, GMAP1.com.